Watcher, I'm Ian, welcome to Essential Handyman. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and our initial thoughts and testing of the Ryobi One Plus quarter inch trim router. It's part of the One Plus battery system range, so battery is it's cordless and it operates off the same battery as the rest of the system. It's the R18TR slash zero. So let's unbox this and have a look, shall we? Okay, what's in the box? There's not going to be a lot, is there? Okay, oh. some sort of fence. Can't work out what's what yet. Cardboard dividers. We've got a collet in the bag there. We've got the unit itself. A protective plastic bag. And it's got a clear polycarbonate base to it. Standard instructions, um, manual, etc. Okay, we've got a fence. That's good. So we've got two fence guide rails. A little spanner there for adjusting. Maybe one of them's the collet. Maybe one of them's the the actual um, route of it. That's it. A couple of like mini, almost like mini. wing nuts ah, it comes with a little rat of it as well okay okay I've had a little bit of a play with it now I've got a bit of a better understanding of what's going on obviously battery sticks in the top to be honest with you with the battery on it it's quite a big unit it's quite a heavy unit it's not the it's nowhere near as big as a plunger router obviously but then you use that with two hands you can I suppose you could use this with two hands but a lot of people just use it for one use the other hand for stabilizing the workpiece so take the battery off at the back here we have a um, the adjustment here you pull this lever across push this clip down and you'll see it opens up the clip there and then you can adjust this uh, quick release almost up and down to where you want get your approximate height then at the top here you have a micro adjustment lever and if you do that you, you can adjust the um, it micro adjusts the height here you have a measuring tape on the left hand side and you can see that with the, when we do the micro adjust it moves it slowly there obviously as I say push this lever here and you do a quick up and down lock that back in place you have the on off switch at the back here just move it over for on move it back to the zero point for off now it feels better in the hand to have the, the, the router like this and then you're, you're, but the off switch is, is around the back then however the, the clear plastic guard that protects your eyes is around this way so you're meant to be holding it here and, and this sort of swell gets in the way then you know once we, if we put the, the battery on where, where am I meant to hold this thing up here down here it feels obviously better for me to hold it at the bottom but then if I'm right-handed I'm obscuring the the vision panel there a little bit it, it feels better to hold it this way but then the chips are going to come flying out here straight into your eyes so this is a bit of a strange setup doesn't 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 feel right holding it this way I think they've made a mistake here they should they should have set this around the other way and you can't even change change it around yourself because although you can undo all these four screws this section here is higher than the, than the button there talking of the button there what that is that's a locking nut for your collet so although there's no blade in there the collet obviously three hands turns around if you push the button in it locks it so you can put your your chuck your um router bit in it's, it's one speed there's no adjustability on speed it's just the same 29,000 rpms no matter what's happening i'd like to see a little bit of adjustability but then this unit is less than 100 pound um i can't remember how much it was i'll put, I'll put a um something on the screen to see how much i paid for it but obviously if you're using it for hardwoods or softwoods you're going to really want to change the speed the very i'd like some variability there there's not but hey ho you know it's a budget unit isn't it you've got two holes at the back here now that's where these 
guides fit in so you just literally screw those all the way in the guide rails are actually a little bit slippery in the hand and they're hard to turn but they do have a flat head um, opening at the back so just get your screwdriver in and it makes it a hell of a lot easier but you have to go quite a way in it takes a while to put these in I'm sure there's something can be done there Ryobi to improve that once you've got your guide rails on, that's where you can attach your fence. So your fence attaches like so and slides over the top of the um, of the of the base plate. I like this because some fences will obviously stop at the side, which means that your ability to to route out small areas is reduced. But being as this goes all the way over, you really do. I mean, you can route a couple of mil. It's a brilliant, a brilliant little fence, and I really like that. And that's when this bag with the two uh, small wing nuts comes into play. They go into the side of the of the guide rail. This is where you tighten up once you've got your desired distance. I've not looked at this yet, so we're learning together. So you set it to there, put your, oh they do tighten down quite nicely actually, and that's strong, yeah, that's a good fence actually, I do like that. This comes with a 6mm collet and also a 6.35mm collet. Now, I'm going to confess I don't know anything about trim routers, I've got a DeWalt plunge router which I've had for years and years, and that's obviously a half inch takes half inch bits and I've got a wide selection of half inch bits but these take the quarter inch bits and I've only got the one that come with it and a couple of other little ones so I think I've got three quarter inch bits so it's something <laughs> another excuse to go out spending more than kids inheritance <laughs> gotta go and buy some more <laughs> quarter inch bits so I'll buy a selection of those yeah I can imagine this is going to be something that's going to be easy lost a spare collet that's a tiny little thing and if you don't use it that often you'll probably not use it and see it in a couple of years and say what the bloody hell is that so if you can keep it in a bag just stick a little note inside it or try to get a little bit more organized i'm probably going to stick it in my uh, filing system over here okay installing the um the um the, the route a bit most important thing to note know is don't be doing this with a battery on you do not want that going round when you're installing this that'd make for a bad day Okay, goes in the collet, obviously it's tightened up so it don't go in at the moment. Push the, uh, where is it now, the bit of the back, this is the brake, to undo it. Aha, uh -huh. this is where we learn our first mistake. We cannot do this very easily with the guide on. In actual fact, what I have um, suspect some people will do, they'll try and make the guide together keep it together like this and then put it into the um into the base but because you've got to unscrew this probably gonna be a bit, a bit of a nightmare so i would always install the two rods and then slide the guide on don't try and make the guide up and put it in here because it's i know you've got um you can use your, the uh, a screwdriver it's just gonna be a faff so with our brake on we can get in there and we can use the spanner Let's get it locked off. Still not locked off yet. Yep, it is now. To undo, undo the collet. Put our route bit in. Tighten it up. And our router bit is now set within there. Obviously, that's incredibly high. So we release the quick release on there. Depress this button, and then you can adjust the height of what you want it. Another nice feature is it's got an LED light. Apologies, it's going to be noisy at the camera. So if you're wearing headphones, get ready to turn them down. But doesn't come on. Oops, on me. <laughs> doesn't come on until you switch it on. So there's the LED light. It's quite bright. I like that. It illuminates the workpiece quite well.
feels a lot smoother. I think I was trying to take too much in one pass before. That feels really nice. Okay, that's the pass I did before. It's clean, but it's too deep. Didn't like the knot at all. This one, much shallower. I mean, that coped remarkably well. I'm happy with that. With this, this is not the easiest thing in the world to get to. So if you put this all the way down, put your brake on, it's easier to access this from the top, to be honest with you. Careful when you're pulling these out, your hands slip and it comes up the blade, you're going to know all about it. <laughs> a bit of a bad day for you. Don't fancy doing that. Okay, so the collet, the nut, takes a lot of undoing to get the blade out. Damn. That's a pain. So that's a bit of a design flaw. So first impression of the collets, a little bit too awkward for my liking. They hold on to the um, the bit too tightly when it's fully undone. You're probably you're gonna have to you'll have to put up with it. I guess the only way around it is to be taking these off with gloves. Something like this is easy. Just put your hand underneath it. But the flat ones, you may need some gloves to undo it. Let's try this. Turn it on. Perfect handle size for something like a chopping board. <laughs> Felt like I was taking too much out in one pass again. That's a bit too deep for one pass, no wonder it was struggling. Okay, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It's um, it's a heavy item for a trim router, but obviously I'm using 5 amp hour batteries, which are going to add quite a lot of weight. But even so, it's quite big. It's, it, as I said, it just feels a little bit strange with the battery and the palm thing being on, feels like the wrong side. Uh, it's plastic, but it's still pretty well made. The fence I really like. The adjustment here I quite like. I love the, the fact that we've got a little bit of a fine adjustment there. I don't like the fact that it's not variable speed. It's 29,000 revs per minute. It seems to me... Okay, now I'm pushing the limits. I'm, I'm really testing it here by going try, try, trying it deep. On the cuts where I'm going shallow and progressively deeper, which is the, the way you should be doing it. Um... But when I'm, when I'm taking a deep it, a deep cut, it's really struggling, and that's very noticeable. Um, all in all, I'm happy with it. I am happy with it. Um, first impressions are good. Obviously, as in all of these tools, I'll review them and I'll let you know in uh, a year or so, after I've had lots and lots of use out of them, how they're holding up, whether they've died on me, if there's any improvements that can be made, if there's any, you know accessories that have made life easier but for the price of it and first impressions I would say a favorable review probably worth going and getting one these are not for your full-time cabinet makers or something like that you know these are just for the DIYers people that have not done a lot of routing in the past don't use it very often don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a, on a bit of kit um, for the beginner, for the uh, man cave DIY wire, these are perfect. And for the money, as I say, I know it's less than £100, and you get the fence, you get everything with it, and you get a router bit, I think that's pretty good value. So um, this gets a thumbs up from me. Well done, Ryobi. <sighs> it's a bit cold in here. I can... <sighs> There's steam coming off my breath. Okay, I'm going in, going to get some food, because it's quite late now. 
I will see you soon. Don't don't forget, give me a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button as well, please. I'll see you shortly. See ya. Oh.